I'm John Stanley. For a while, I was an independent filmmaker myself. Uh, I grew up uh, with my father going to the movies, and we saw every kind of genre movie. He loved war movies, even though he had been badly wounded in World War II in the Pacific. He just loved war movies. He loved Western movies, John Wayne movies. We never missed one. So I, I had this love for many different kinds of movies, and especially for the horror sci-fi, thanks to uh, not so much to movies, but to because a lot of the old classics hadn't come on television yet, but just from the comic books. And I bought pulp magazines too. I have a huge collection of uh, pulp magazines with stories by Ray Bradbury and Robert Block and all these wonderful, wonderful writers. Well, uh, in my teen years, I had uh, mom and dad bought me an 8mm camera so with some friends we began making uh, western movies, crime movies, a war movie and some of these are actually going to be depicted in our release of Homecoming 2. There'll be a bonus feature. But the main thing I wanted to tell you was in the 70s um, Ken Davis who was a photo retoucher and artist who worked at the Chronicle we became good friends and we actually um, did a lot of uh, writing together. Uh, we did two books, uh, both were detective books. One was called Bogart 48, in which Humphrey Bogart and Peter Lorre uh, joined forces to solve a murder. Someone murders a good friend of uh, Humphrey Bogart, and so the whole novel depicts them mingling with fictional characters and real-life characters. Uh, who were indeed part of their lives back in the 1940s. Well, t uh, Ken Davis and I, after doing some short subject films, decided to make a horror film. It was going to be called Nightmare in Blood, uh, and it was going to be about fandom. The, fan the fans who love to come to the conventions, so we decided we're going to set it at a uh, convention for fans, and the guest of honor is going to be an actor from Hollywood called Malachi who specializes in portraying a vampire character in a series of movies and he always ends up getting whatever he wants for lunch, dinner, or <laughs> breakfast. And uh, we actually shot the film in the San Francisco Bay Area. The theater where the convention takes place was the Fox Theater in downtown Oakland. Uh, which I believe is still still there today. I think they've renovated it and it's it's up and running again. However, it took us five years to get the movie shot, to find a distributor, to do the final music track, the re-editing and whatever had to be done. But it finally got into theaters in 1978 and uh, played all over the country. Uh, it played first run in theaters and then it went second run then it went into drive-in theaters across America. Uh, it was quite an experience uh, to have been able to make a full-length feature movie um, with a really, ex I thought, a really good cast. We did a pretty good job of casting the, the main characters. When I make public appearances at special uh, shows, toy shows, or uh, sci-fi, conventions or comic book shows, uh, the, the old fan will come up to my table and uh, begin to tell me a story about his or her youth, what it was like growing up on Saturday night watching Creature Features with mom and dad, brother and sister, whatever the combination. And uh, although each individual is different, the stories they tell, they're all the same. They focus on a childhood memory a really wonderful happy moment in a family situation where they got to see some of the great classic horror and sci-fi films from the 30s and the 40s uh, up through modern times and it's something that never quite goes away and, and whether they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s or even 80s the story always comes out the details are a little different but that heartfelt emotion that's what's always there. Uh, this is uh, 
I was a TV horror host. This came out of 2007, and it's the story of how Bob Wilkins uh, started Creature Features at Channel 2. It's also the history of how Creature Hosts uh, developed in America in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and the story of how I took over. He uh, picked me to be his replacement. Others tried out for the job, but uh, ironically, I was chosen to take his place. And the book also contains uh, special interviews I did with people like Ray Bradbury, Robert Block, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price. The list goes on and on. All of the Star uh, Trek people, some of the Star Wars people. It's a very uh, action-packed book. <laughs> Reflects a lot of meetings with a lot of major stars of Hollywood. Being a modern filmmaker, I can only imagine that there are opportunities that I didn't experience uh, in that when I made my films uh, you had to raise the money yourself and it was very expensive. It was expensive to rent equipment, to edit, uh, to record music and so on. And some of those things are very inexpensive now. Uh, people can uh, go out with limited amount of material, cameras and so on and get what they need and turn it into something very, very professional looking. Um, so I think it's easier now for filmmakers than it was 30 or 40 years ago. I think there are more doors that can be opened with the modern equipment, the simplicity of some of our modern equipment. Uh, but the main thing is the creativity in your mind. That hasn't changed. It's still required. You have to I think you have to understand cinema to be able to make a, say, a feature film. You need to know genre. You need to know where the genre has gone, and you also must imagine where you can take the genre in a new way that hasn't been done before. I think that's very, very important. Uh, the book is just full of uh, fairly, a lot of them are really historical, first time in print. Uh, photographs, scenes from the mini movies. Uh, Bob Wilkins. Uh, here's Elvira. I interviewed her a couple of times. Uh, Zachary, who died last, uh, I guess he died this year or last year. Uh, interview with Gene Roddenberry. Oh, wow. Uh, Leonard Nimoy, William Shatner. Then into the uh, motion picture era. Uh, different motion pictures they made together. I was able to cover most